Welcome to Criminal AF. And for those of you joining us for the first time, this is a true crime podcast. There will be talk of murder, rape, torture, assault, and pretty much any crime that would haunt you nightmares at any given moment. There will be detailed descriptions of said events, and there will be some vulgar language. Like fuck. We understand that Criminal AF is not for everyone, but we just ask that you at least give it a listen. If it's not for you, hey, thanks for checking it out. See ya. But if it is, welcome to the debauchery. Wendy Caulfield, 16, left her foster home on July 8, 1982. She was found by two boys on July 15th in the Green River. Giselle LaVorn, 19, last seen leaving her apartment on July 17, 1982. Her remains were found on September 25th near an apple tree in Des Moines Creek Park. Deborah Bonner, 23, last seen on July 25th, 1982. Her remains were found on August 12th in the Green River. Marsha Chapman, 31. She left her apartment on August 1st, 1982. A fisherman found her in the Green River on August 15th. She left behind three children. Cynthia Hines, 17. She was leaving a convenience store along the SeaTac Strip on August 11th, 1982. The same fisherman found her on August 15th, only a few feet from Chapman. Opal Mills, 16. She was a junior in high school and was last heard from by her parents when she called from Angle Lake Park on August 12, 1982. She was found by police on the shore of the Green River, 30 feet away from Chapman and Hines. Terry Milligan, 16, went missing from Highway 99 on August 29, 1982. She was found by police on April 1, 1984. Mary Meehan, 18. Last seen by her boyfriend leaving their apartment along the SeaTac Strip on August 29, 1982. Police found her partially buried remains on November 13, 1983. She was eight and a half months pregnant. Deborah Estes was a 15-year-old runaway who vanished on September 20, 1982. Workers found her remains while digging a hole for a new playground at an apartment complex on May 30, 1988. Linda Rule, 16 was heading towards the Kmart department store when she disappeared on September 26, 1982. Construction workers found her remains in a shallow ditch on January 31, 1983. She was not originally included in the Green River investigation until Ridgeway's confession. Denise Bush, 23, went missing on October 6, 1982 and was found on June 12, 1985. Shonda Summer, 17, missing since October of 1982 was found August 11, 1983, near an apple tree just north of SeaTac Airport. Shirley Sherrill, 18, disappeared from Seattle's Chinatown in late October of 1982. Police found her remains in Tagard, Oregon, on June 14, 1985. Rebecca Morero, 20, was last seen leaving the Western Six Motel along Highway 99 on December 3, 1982. Her skull was found on December 21st, 2010, in the same vicinity as the remains of Maria Malvar. Rebecca was not originally included in the Green River investigation, nor did Ridgway include her in his 2003 confession. Upon her discovery, Ridgway confessed to her murder, making her his 49th confirmed victim. Colleen Brockman, 15, vanished on Christmas Eve, 1982. Her remains were discovered on May 26, 1984, with her braces still intact. Sandra Major, 20, originally known as Jane Doe B-16, went missing the same day as Colleen. Her remains were discovered on December 30th, 1985, and she was not identified until June of 2012. Alma Smith, 18, went missing from Highway 99 on March 3rd, 1983. She was found April 2nd, 1984, in the woods along Star Lake Road. Dolores Williams, 17, disappeared from a hotel along Highway 99 in March of 1983. Her remains were discovered March 31, 1984 in the woods along Star Lake Road. Gail Matthews, 23, was last seen sitting in a pickup truck with a middle-aged white man on April 10, 1983. She was found by two people searching for a lost pet on September 19, 1983, 
at the base of a fir tree along Star Lake Road. Andrea Childers, 19, disappeared from a Seattle bus stop on April 14, 1983. She was found six years later in 1989 near the SeaTac Airport. Sandra Gabbert, 17, was last seen along the SeaTac Strip on April 17, 1983. Her remains were found in the woods on April 1, 1984, along Star Lake Road. Kimikai Pitzer, 16, went missing in April of 1983 when she was last seen entering a pickup truck. Her skull was found in December of 1983. Her body was found about 100 yards away at the base of a steep embankment, two years later. Maria Malvar, 18, entered a pickup truck and vanished on April 30, 1983. Ridgeway led police to her remains in September of 2003. Carol Christensen, 21, finished her shift at the SeaTac Tavern on May 3, 1983 and disappeared. She was found on the 8th of that month in a wooded area of Maple Valley. Martina Athorley, 18, was last seen along Highway 99 on May 22, 1983. She was found November 14, 1984, in the woods off of Highway 410. One day later, Cheryl Wims, 18, disappeared on her birthday on May 3, 1983. Her remains were found along with two other victims north of the SeaTac Airport on March 22, 1984. Yvonne Antosh, 19, vanished from Highway 99 on May 31, 1983. Hunters found her remains in the woods on October 15, 1983. Carrie Royce, 15, went missing in June of 1983. Police found her remains down an embankment off of Star Lake Road on March 10, 1985. Constance Neon, 21, disappeared June 8, 1983. She was discovered October 27, 1983, in a vacant lot just south of the SeaTac Airport. Kelly Ware, 22, was last seen on July 18, 1983. Her remains were found about 100 feet away from Constance. Tina Thompson, 22, went missing on July 25, 1983. Her concealed remains were discovered by police on April 20, 1984. April Butram, 17, Vanished in August of 1983. Ridgeway led police to her remains in August of 2003. Debbie Abernathy, 26, disappeared September 5, 1983. She was found by an elk hunter on March 31, 1984, along a logging road. Tracy Winston, 19, missing since September 12, 1983, was found headless near the base of some trees at Cottonwood Grove Park, which runs along the Green River. Her skull was found in November of 2005, several miles away from her body. Maureen Feeney, 19, previously worked in a daycare. She disappeared from Seattle on September 28, 1983. Her remains were found in May of 1986. Mary Sue Bellow, 25, vanished from Seattle on October 11, 1983. She was discovered October 12, 1984, along Highway 410. Pammy Avent, 16, Left her mother's home in Seattle on October 26, 1983, never to be heard from again. Ridgeway led police to her remains in August of 2003. Delise Plager, 22, disappeared October 30, 1983. She was found by a person gathering moss along I-90 on February 14, 1984. Kimberly Nelson, 21, was sitting at a bus stop on Highway 99 when she vanished on November 1, 1983. Her remains were found on June 13, 1986, along Interstate 90. Lisa Yates was last seen in December of 1983. Her skeletal remains were discovered on March 13, 1984, off of Interstate 90. Mary West, 16, left her aunt's house on February 6, 1984 and disappeared. She was found in the woods of Seward Park on September 8, 1985. Cindy Ann Smith, 17 was last seen in March of 1984. Two children found her remains at the bottom of a ravine in June of 1987. Patricia Barzak, 19, went missing on October 17, 1986 after being spotted walking along Highway 99. Her skull was found by a road maintenance worker in February of 1993. Roberta Hayes, 21, left the Portland, Oregon jail never to be seen alive again. Her skeletal remains were found along Highway 410 on September 11, 1991. Marta Reeves, 37, and a mother of four, 
called her estranged husband asking to borrow some money and then was never heard from again. She was found on September 20th, 1990, along Highway 410. Patricia Yellowrobe, 38, went missing at the beginning of August in 1998 and was found a few days later on August 6, 1998. Her death was originally believed to be accidental until Ridgway confessed to her murder. Jane Doe B10, an unidentified white female, described as being about 15 years old, was found in March of 1984. Jane Doe B17, an unidentified female of unknown race, was believed to be aged 14 to 18 years old. She was discovered on January 2nd, 1986. Partial remains that were discovered in a separate area in February of 1984 have been linked to Jane Doe B17. Jane Doe B20, an unidentified female of unknown race, was believed to be aged between 13 and 24 years old. She was discovered in August of 2008. I'm Dave Jari. I'm Gary Quarter. And this is Criminal as Fuck. Mass, 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 mass is criminal as fuck. What's good, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Criminal AF. Once again, I'm Dave Jari. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Garrett Corner. How we doing? So you may be wondering why we just spent the last 11 minutes listening to names being read off. And it was to give you a kind of a different perspective. And the subject that we're discussing today is one of the most prolific serial killers oh, in man. the United States. And I don't use that term lightly. Arguably the GOAT. Right. Because, you know, you hear like Ted Bundy, you know, the most prolific or, both, you know, this one, that one. These guys don't have anything on Gary Ridgewood. No, yeah. Not he's at all. the, as far as the total body count, uh, as far as serial killers go, he's number two in the United States. Yep. So names we just read were 49 women that Gary Ridgway had been convicted of killing. Convicted. So that's 49 mothers, daughters, sisters, wives, girlfriends. You know, it doesn't mean shit that most of these women live the lifestyle that is frowned upon by society. You know, they're 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 fucking human beings, you know, with yeah. families and dreams and lives of their own and you know it, it hits different too when you sit there and listen to forty nine names. Yeah, yeah. And you really put in perspective forty nine lives yeah. were taken. Like eleven minutes to read forty nine fuck Oof. you know what I mean? R. I. P. guys. Yeah. Oof. But uh, you know, their lives were snuffed out because of this sick fucking demented individual and you know to to fully feel the impact of the devastation left behind by gary ridgeway their their 49 names deserve to be heard you know as we'll learn later in the episode there were many more women that lost their lives both admittedly and allegedly by gary ridgeway mm -hmm. you know he claims to have murdered up to 71 authorities believe it could be well over 100 but before we get into this story we'd like to recognize a sponsor for this episode it's hello fresh with hello fresh you get farm fresh pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep skip trips to the grocery store and count on hello fresh to make home cooking easy fun and affordable that's why it's America's number, number one, one meal kit. kit. To get our amazing offer of 16 free meals and free shipping, go to HelloFresh.com backslash CriminalAF16 and use code CriminalAF16. So just a reminder, you can become one of the debauched by joining our Patreon for as little as $2 a month for general support. Everyone gets access to our private Discord and those who join the $5 tier, which, by the way, is now a seven-day free trial. Hey. That's right. Come try it out. Uh, join our Ramirez tiers at no cost to you for seven days. And if you like what you see, welcome to the debauchery. If not, cancel within seven days. No biggie. Thanks for See ya. Out. So anyway, with our Ramirez tier or above, you get all of our audible, video, and downloadable content, including narrated scripts for every story, five-minute murder, where I discuss a short true crime event in about five minutes minutes for this five minute murder i'm going to be discussing the old case of the slender man mm. yeah, the slender man case slender man. Uh, you also get our patreon only podcast called random af where we discuss anything and everything and we don't hold anything back and last episode was uh, kind of <laughs> wild thanks to garrett uh that, that's, got all, him. that's all i'm gonna say I was, got you. yeah that was that was interesting garrett uh <clears throat> yeah it gets pretty crazy and it's 100 not Ree! safe for work <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, um, I think I'm changing my uh, 100 Patreon sub goal oh. in honor of Norm Summerton. Yeah. Instead of posing you like the bodies of Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah. we're gonna go and we're gonna video for the Patreon, and we're gonna go and to a dominatrix. Oh. <laughs> and we're gonna wear diapers, and we're. Gonna... <laughs> 
<laughs> and crawl around on our hands and knees. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. And we're gonna and we're gonna upload the video on the Patreon. So look out for that, guys. At hundred. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we gotta find one. Where do you find him? Back pages? I don't know. Uh, Go check out the random AF episode be, if you didn't. It used to be Craig, it used to be Craigslist. I don't know. Yep. About <laughs> For the higher tiers, you get all of this, plus producer <laughs> credits on every episode. Some goodies thrown in, like t-shirts, posters, coffee mugs, etc. To choose your tier, just go to criminalafpodcast.com backslash support, or click on the link in the episode description. There are other ways to support Criminal AF as well. You can go visit our show at Apple Podcasts, where you can leave a detailed review on why Criminal AF has had such a positive impact on your life. You can also go to Spotify and answer the questions or polls that are posted with each episode. Last but not least, you can be rocking our merch. Go get you some merch. Yes, sir. There are <laughs> there are tons of designs and products to choose from, and you can find them all at criminalafpodcast.com backslash shop. One other quick announcement is that I was a guest host on the podcast, Fright Flick, Fuck, Mary Kill. Mm. Yeah. And that's hosted by one of our friends of the show, Jay, where he reviews horror movies and it gives them a rating of whether he would fuck it, marry it, or kill it. And we discussed the top-notch Fright Flick called The Special. <laughs> that would be so dumb. <laughs> it's good, though. It's a good dumb. That's a good dumb. Uh, so far... Fun- so follow the link in the episode description to go to wherever you listen to podcasts and type in Fright Flick FMK to follow and hear this episode and many more. Mail call. Mail call. <laughs> oh my God, I'll never get that out of my head. Mm. All right. Prior to every episode, we send out an AMA on Instagram for a chance for your question to be answered on air. And today we have, we actually have quite a few. Um, I'm going to try to get to them all. We'll, we'll see how we are with time. But first is from Mike West, our friend Mike. Hey, Mikey. And, and he wants to know, if you had to compare yourself to a serial killer, who would it be? Oh, good question, Mikey. Um, I'll, I'll let you go first. I got to think on that. I can't just come off the top of it. Are we going PC or are we going like real? No, dude. Let it out. It can get kind of dark, though. All right. Do it. <laughs> no, I don't want to go that dark. No, go, go that dark. Go that dark. Go that dark. <laughs> Go, 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 go. No, I'm not going to know. Go, 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 go. I mean, I'm just going to go to my go-to, you know, Ed Kemper. You know, my boy, Ed. You know, he was so, like, chill and nonchalant. You know, you talk to him. You could listen to him, you know, for hours and, you know. But he had this, like, rage inside of him, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of I kind of feel that way. Kemper's definitely a good one for you. Yeah. I can see that. That's what I would say. And I wouldn't mind cutting off somebody's head and, like... Screaming at it yeah. on the mantle. Fuck huh? <laughs> mom! <laughs> Why'd you put my pissy bed sheets outside? <laughs> yeah, Kemper's a good one for you. Um, oh, I don't know. I I probably have to go with Bundy. Yeah, I'd have to go because he wasn't a bigger guy. You yeah. know what I mean? He was kind of sl- like lanky and slippery. I feel right. like I, that's. I feel like that's how I would kill. I was. I'd be more of a trickster it's than trickster. just a, yeah, than, yeah. than an overpowering force. Right. Yeah, I could definitely see that. More Bundy esque. Yeah, you know I can hundred percent see that. Yeah, I'm not just. You're like, hey, what's going on? Hey, hey look, come, come, come look at can this. Can you help me fix my car? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and <laughs> like you say, you're not in, in you're not like uh, considered an imposing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, yeah. I mean? I'm not gonna go over there and try to like just right. strangle somebody and take them off the side of the road like right. uh, like a Michael Ross or like you know what I mean? Right. It's like, oh shit, I dropped this. Can you pick that up for me? <laughs> wow. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, I can definitely see that for you. I'd probably go Bundy. That's that's probably my. Dude, I, yeah. my that's my actually kind of frightening now that I think about it. Yeah, you, you got you got a little it's edge to you. You right, got a little edge. Right, right, push him right into a fucking yeah. meat compactor light. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's gonna be my uh, my signature. <laughs> that's the like right. human squares. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going with Kemper. Garrett's going with Bundy. Thank you very much, Mike West. Uh, next is our friend Iron Chickadee from the land down under. Hi. Ah, and she asked. Why so many cases of familicide lately in the United States? Now, we just talked about the, the Ohio case where the guy lined up his children in the yeah, yard and then yep. blasted them in the back of the head. That's, uh, I don't know. He didn't yeah. even give a good reason. No. Like, that's what pissed me off about that. I just really, when I really look at that, you like, you give me a divine, give me right. some, blame God, blame yeah. something. Be he, crazy. he was just, yeah, be yeah, crazy. Be crazy. Yeah, that's fine. He just kind of sat fine, there, but... like, eh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. nonchalant, just said he'd been thinking about it for a long time. Like, yeah. That's not good enough for me. Well, is, is there anything good enough to no, I know, blast but, your three children? But the, the minute somebody or... starts talking about re- revelation and all yeah. this shit, I'm like, okay, he's okay, lost. Yeah, he's, yeah, crazy. he's crazy. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, just, just, eh, I. Just sick of these fucking kids. Like, ah, right. dude, come on. Yeah. And then, like, the police video, you know, the police show up, the body cam, and 
and he's like, he's like, I'm not gonna hurt anybody. I'm not gonna hurt anybody. I'm like, what do you mean you're not gonna fucking hurt anybody? You just killed your fucking three kids as in the front you, yard. As you see the blurred out images in the yard, dude, yeah, it's horrible. But yeah. Uh, I mean, where were we? <laughs> uh, like side. So people oh, killing yeah, their yeah, yeah, people yeah, yeah. killing their families. Yeah. Uh, then you have the uh, the one in the uh, fuck I can't remember the name. The one in Idaho, where the mother killed her two children, her and her new fucking husband. I mean, we can go down like to the psychology of it, where it's like that you know, just like where the sex and killing lines, the wires get too close, yeah, 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 and then yeah. you right. you become sexually gratified by killing. Right. I think it goes with love too. Because you can love something so much that you just want to squeeze. You know what I'm saying? Like, I might love my kids so much. Sometimes I'm just like, dude, I could just squeeze the shit out of you. You know, how, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Only, like, parents can understand that. Right? Yeah, it's like, yeah, you just, yeah. you just, like, when you give them a hug, you just squeeze the hell out of them. Right. I bet you that, that I bet you those wires can get crossed, too. Yeah. Very, uh. I would say, I, I, yeah. Cause in more of a killing way. To me, like you, like we were talking about earlier, like, with, with people killing their children and whatnot, it either comes down to, mainly, the mother or the father has a new hus- uh, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, yeah. and they don't want eh, they don't want to be tied down with the kids, and then they go off and kill their kids just so they can be with the lover. Or Fucking it comes down to something... American murderer. Uh, it comes down to something religious. Yeah, that usually you see that postpartum moms go that right. way. Right. Postpartum, uh, postpartum moms go that way. Who's but one that drunk? fathers doing it, it's usually... They're just sick. <laughs> they're yeah. sick. Of, they want to like live this alternate life for... Right. But they also don't want to give up what they have. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's, yeah. it's weird. Yeah. Uh, what was that one? Uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank today. I'm sorry, guys. The one that drowned all our kids in the bathtub because uh, God told her to oh, God, uh, there's, there's, sa- save their save their souls before they get too yeah, tainted there's, or whatever. There, that's, it happened more than once. No, yeah. I, I, I know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But I'm about saying that. it's either one thing or another. And it, but... But yeah, it seems like there's. Hey, uh, tell the producer, producer, uh, yeah. look that, look that up real yeah. quick for us. Yeah. Can you Google? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, wh- where'd he go? Oh, oh, yeah, over here. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> it's a high end podcast. Guys. High end podcast. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Mother drowning herself, kids in yeah. the bathtub. Yeah. Yeah. So it usually comes out to like one or two, three, three things. But I mean, you do see a lot more often nowadays. And uh, I'm not going to say who said it because it's it's going to go into a whole uh, political thing. But mm. um, a friend of both of ours uh, had said that there's st- there appears to be a link between like school shootings, familicide, like a lot of the violence that you see in the United States now uh, nowadays uh, linked to uh, the increase in psychedelic drugs or uh, uh, like Prozac and, 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 and you know, you're yeah, not yeah, psychedelic. Yeah. But you know I, I, I mean. thought you're going like no, 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 no. But like the Prozacs and the. Uh, the mind, pharmaceutical the, drugs. Yeah, pharmaceuticals. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, could it be? I don't know. I mean, there isn't like a, a, a proven link, but it, it it coincides with the increase in pharmaceutical drugs with you know violence and and whatnot. Yeah. Or depression. You know, because I'll tell you that's what. That's what I mean. Postpart. Most of those I'll, moms are like yeah. they're clear post, and they've never gotten help. They right. leave the hospital with a baby. They're obviously going through something. Right. Yeah. And have you ever listened to it's like the girl, the girl, the poor girl? I just saw this article about the girl who threw her baby in the trash, got arrested. Did you see? Yes, that? I saw that. Yeah. The the girl. Seemed like a normal girl, and when you watch the dash cam, vi- the the body cam videos and stuff like that, she clearly was going through a postpartum episode. Right. I, I mean, obviously, you've you've had kids. You understand that they kind of like they the nurse is like, "Well, throw it on you and be like, hey, good luck." Like they want you to get, right. get it quick, get yeah. it quick because you're going home. You're going, right. You know what I mean? Right. Sometimes people need a little bit of help here. Going back to the uh, pharmaceuticals is is when you look at all these like depression drugs and anxiety drugs and all this all these kind of things that they're like fucking pu- pushing on people. Yeah. Like what what's one of the major fucking side effects? Increased loss of like suicide. Increased yeah, yeah, yeah. violent thoughts. You're being treated for depression, Dude. and the side effect is increased loss of suicide. I mean, at Chantex. <laughs> look at Chantex. Look I know. Quit smoking. Quit smoking drugs. Suicidal, violent outbreaks and yeah. shit like that. Like, I, was, I did. I did Chantex before, and I'll tell you, there was some. Did episode. you wake up in the fucking street in your underwear, just no, like, no, <laughs> nothing, like a fucking meth head? Nothing crazy like that. But I, I just remember like going from like zero to a fucking hundred. And like, I would snap. Dude, my dad. You know? You want to hear a funny Chantex uh, story? My dad, when he quit, he tried Chantex, mm-hmm. right? He, so he, he he did it for like two weeks, three weeks, whatever. You know how you have to like wait until it really kicks right, right, in? Right, yeah, yeah. Really, uh, whatever. He was on his like last phase of it. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know exactly the yeah, rules yeah. of Chantex. Yeah. I was living at my parents' house. I was Ooh. young. This is high school. Two o'clock in the morning, we heard the truck hit like, like a tree. He was in the yard. The truck was parked into a tree. The door door open and he was in his underwear laying laying on the floor laying on the ground 
<gasps> completely wake and then like he came to and realized like what he was completely sleepwalking got in the truck and drove at like three o'clock in the morning. I'm not, that's why, that's why I joked. Yeah, and, and well, it was he was going like real slow, so yeah, it didn't yeah, make yeah, any yeah. like big damage. Right, but right. he hit the tree and then rolled out of the car. That's not that's what I'm. But that's what I'm saying. Like Chantex is wild. Yeah. People, and but you know, uh, yeah. you got to sometimes you got to risk it for. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm interested. You never had a crazy. You just had weird dreams. I had vivid dreams and I had I wouldn't call violent outbursts, but little roid rage. Yeah, there was a little, there was a little rage, you know. Yeah, you know, we we talked about in the past, you know, like having intrusive thoughts and how you 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 think of it, but you don't act on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was on Chantix, I every time you say that, I just think of you driving to work, yeah. just <laughs> wanting, to, <laughs> wanting to drive everybody yeah. off the road. I just want wham. To, what would I do? I just slammed in the back of this fucking car, <laughs> dude. I just want to like sometimes I just want to spin people out. Yeah, you oh, know, dude, just yeah. tip the back of the oh, car, yeah. have them spin out, crash into Try, a fucking. You practice train. that police maneuver. Yeah, <laughs> was it a pit? pit the pit, yeah, the, yeah, the pit, pit, pit something. All right, we're going way off. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, so, where's the next uh, question? Yeah. So why so many familis familicide? My opinion, and that's all it is opinion. I'm not an expert. I will say the increase in uh, pharmaceuticals. So that's it's, a very it, good answer. It's, would, it's, it's doing something in people's fucking heads. It's very but good anyway, answer. Criminal AF. We'll be back after this quick break. Hello, Hello Fresh. You know, Garrett, the victims of the Cheshire murders from episode three were spotted at a grocery store. Sounds like a reason to stay at home and order HelloFresh. Yes, it does. <laughs> With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Dave, let me tell you, the pork tacos, I don't know if you've had them yet. Oh, I've found a new love in life. <laughs> They're so good. And let me tell you, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, all right? I'm not the <laughs> I'm not the brightest bowl in the bowl shop or what, whatever no, you want to say. Yourself it. Short. Whatever you want to say it, but I'm telling you it's super easy to make. Anybody can do it. Step-by-step -step directions. The box comes right to your door. What I mean, what more can you say? It's it, it's hello fresh, guys. Everybody knows that the America's number one meal kit is the easiest option to cook yourself some dinner. So I actually introduced my son to HelloFresh, and uh, you know he's he's 22 years old, and he still eats like uh, he, he's five. He eats chicken nuggets and and, and tacos. <laughs> so I actually made him the uh, the cheesy beef and black bean enchiladas. And let me tell you, he actually stepped out of his realm. He, it's like he discovered the keys to the universe. Right. He was like, okay, what have I been missing my entire life? So I'm gonna try something new. I'm actually gonna substitute you know his usual chicken nuggets and make him the Buslamic rosemary chicken. That one yeah, was good. Something fresh. That one yeah. was good. I had that one before, and it was banging. Listen, figuring out what's for dinner is not at the top of anyone's summer activity wish list. HelloFresh delivers mouthwatering, chef-crafted recipes and fresh ingredients to your door so you can spend your summer doing whatever you want. Stuck in a recipe rut? Take a bite out of something new with 40 recipes to choose from weekly. With options to please even the pickiest of eaters, like my son, you'll always find meals everyone at the table will enjoy. To get all this, go to HelloFresh.com backslash CriminalAF16 and use code CriminalAF16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. And again, go to HelloFresh.com slash CriminalAF16 and use code CriminalAF16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. And don't forget, tag your meal creation at hashtag HelloFreshPicks. America's, America's number one meal kit. <laughs> now back to CriminalAF. Uh, all right, across the pond, we have our friend Anna Marie 74, and she was like, do you think you know enough to not be caught even with today's science for murder? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, I already know. I yeah, can. you think for sure. Yeah, I think you're I, super I think, cocky. I, we, we, no, we talked about this. I know. Before. We've definitely talked about this. We talked, we've about, talked this. about this off the podcast. We've yeah, talked yeah. about this. Yeah, I could 100%. Because even with today's science and everything like that, if you, if you are, truly didn't want to get caught, yeah, if you if you were already under the radar, like you never had your you know DNA taken or whatever, yeah, but doesn't matter anymore. Why your fucking uncle or your brother or somebody in your family could have got the DNA? That's true. Taken and they still got you. Yeah, or at least a lead on you. A lead, right? All right, change of plans. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to turn into a conspiracy. The government is watching you. Don't take those damn Ancestry.com. Uh, no. So if I was a transient, all right. So you're just a homeless guy. Homeless guy, whatever. I'm a hobo. What do they call that? A train hopper. The, ho the hobos. Yeah. yeah okay. Going from trail yard, uh, train yard you to train yard. You got your stick in your knapsack. Yeah, in my knapsack. <laughs> in my little scruffy beard. Um, yeah. If I was a transient going state to state to state to state to state to state and each train stop 
you off somebody. You, so you'd make a transatlantic, uh, transatlantic <laughs> killing spree, huh? Kurt, yeah. yeah. And then just stop at Key West and just live on, <laughs> live on the <laughs> beach. Live on the beach. In a shitty tiki bar somewhere. Yep. I like it. With, yeah. the, with the true Florida scum you are. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if I, I would. I don't know if I'd, I'd never be caught, but you could do that for a very long yes, time. Yes. Yeah. You could you could because go on a pretty good spree. You can't connect the dot. You know what I mean? There's no dots to connect. Yeah. You'd have to live off grid. No phone. No. No. no right. No family. No nothing. You would, you would have, almost have to be a hobo killer. Mm-hmm. It would. Um, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to say yes. But I'm gonna say yes. I I think I could. I think I could. But wow. I would, I would be. It would be very like. I would just like you said. I would go on a trip. No one would know where that I went, and I would just go down like a an empty highway where I know there's no cameras and desolated areas. Right. Where. Do you know what I mean? Just like you said, you kill, you keep going. Yeah. Oh, don't go anywhere near populated areas, back roads, stuff like that. That's the only place that you can get away with it. Right. And even then, dude, leaving footprints, tire marks, you're like. The FBI's the FBI's no joke when right. they're on when they're on it, dude. Yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah. No, it's, but, it's amazing when you see how these people get caught. Not the guy from fucking Idaho. He's just a complete idiot. Yeah, 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 that dude's a doof. But because uh, when we talked about you know how Gary Ridgway was the number two most prolific, the first one is Samuel Little, and he was kind of like that. Not not so much a transient, but he would travel state to state to state to yeah. state to state, and he would just murder along the way, and he got away with it for years. Now. Kind of like what you were just saying. It reminded me a little bit of Israel Keys. Yes, yes, very if, if, uh, if, upper, if, up in Alaska. Yeah, fucking. If Israel Keys didn't steal that woman's bank card and used it on one of his <laughs> fucking vacations, he never would have been fucking caught. Yep. Because what he would do, he would fly into one city, rent a car, travel a thousand fucking miles to some random fucking hick town, murder whoever he fucking could murder travel you know what i mean yeah like there was no record of where he was he yep. would land and then just drive fucking to wherever you know yeah but that's also i hate to do this i hate because of the hatred that i have for this man but you've got to give props to btk oh that's your boy oh yeah your boy BTK, no but i'm just yeah. saying you have to give him props for uh-huh. for if he if obviously he basically snitched on him fucking himself mm-hmm. right but he was breaking and entering the homes leaving, leaving his dna he, he made it a long time without yeah. getting caught mm-hmm. So like that's you got to give props. He wasn't out here just going trans. Like he was right. killing people that he knew, like the areas that he would be around. Well, he was an ADT fucking home security, home security installer. Yeah, yeah it's so he would know how to get into people's house. You know what I mean? So it's that's, actually shocking. He made it so long. Yeah. So thank you very much, Anna Marie. We're gonna go into the next one, and that is gonna be C Rock ninety two. C Rock. They want to know. Which serial killer would you let stay at your house for one night? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Ah, ah. That's a good question. Yeah. But none of them. <laughs> none of them, yeah. None of them. Probably Eileen. I might take that for a spin. Yeah. <laughs> She'll fucking murder you I in know. the middle of your sleep. No, I'd be nice. I'd be nice. <laughs> I'd make her feel She'll, I'd, she'll fucking uh, snap somehow. No, 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 no Eileen. Snap. You take control, baby. Go uh, ahead. Uh, go ahead, Eileen. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to go on a, on a limb here. So mm-hmm. all my kids are grown. I'm going to say someone who we, we covered on this show already, and that's Mary Beth Tinning. Oh, you can't go. What? She, she can say. She, I don't have any, like, yeah, but I don't have any, like, two year old babies. She's, yeah, I was going to say, she's killing kids. That's not scary. <laughs> that's not scary. Come on. Get, live on the edge, Dave. That's a safe one. Uh, Give Ramirez his stank breath. Oh, uh, <laughs> that would be interesting, though, Ramirez. Imagine he wakes up and he's like, ah, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> good morning. Good morning, Dave. <laughs> uh, bleh. <laughs> with his fucking black tooth. Uh. Yeah, ooh. Yeah, I'm going Eileen. You Me and Eileen, Eileen are hanging out. All right. We're going to smoke cigarettes. We're going to hang out, drink fucking... Yeah. You know what? I'm, I am going to go to Ramirez. Fuck it. Why not? We'll stay up. We'll drink all night. Party. Yeah, you can... I, I feel like... I, I feel like I'm enough of a sociopath that I could, like... Befriend one of them. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy. Imagine the like, stories Ramirez would fucking uh, tell. Like, He's like, yeah, hey, man, fuck it. He'd yeah. just go off on a tangent. Kind of like how, you know, the toolbox killers met in jail. You, yeah, you know yeah. how they just started talking about their fantasies. I right. would just completely lie and say, yeah, right. I don't like, <laughs> I, you know what I mean? I just completely lie right to go him. Go along yeah, with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me show like, and then as soon as he's out of the house, I'm like, 911. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to, like, take a shower because you feel so gross. Yeah. yeah. Toolbox, like, uh, and also Karma Sarjeski. You know, oh, they, yeah, they yeah. met in jail, they same Thing. Yep. It's, it would be. I would feel like I could do it. Right. I feel like I could do it. Yeah, just kind of go along with go along with the convo. Yep. 
Yeah, so whatever. I'm going to go with Ramirez. Ramirez? Not? I'm going to stay with Eileen. Yeah. We're going to hang out. I'll buy an we might go to the bar. I can, we can go to the bar and hang out. Oh, now you're she, fucked. She, you know, she would... Now you're fucked. Because oh, when, no. when she gets out of the sauce. No, and then I'm going to look at the bartender and be like, no, just water. <laughs> Cut it off. Don't. Just pineapple juice. <laughs> no vodka. No vodka. <laughs> oh, man. She looked like she'd be a good hang at the bar. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want to play some pool, Eileen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she got that manic, like, yeah. like an energy to her. <laughs> got a little fucking, like, like, twitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the crackhead twitch. Uh, set up, uh, nice fire, yeah. s'mores maybe. <laughs> we'll be hanging out. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll bring them. We'll 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 make, we'll make it a force, and we'll all hang out. Oh God, damn. Her and Ramirez can discuss their uh, dental hygiene. Yeah. <laughs> no, because then he would probably kill her. <laughs> and they're like, "Fuck!" No, we're all our friends. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh man alright oh. so thank you very much for that one next up is Pickle Jenny 420 nice yeah sounds just like a bone yeah getting there I'm working on it uh, which serial killer oh here okay kind of similar which serial killer would you hang out with and have a beer or two I, I just Same answered thing. it yeah you said Ramirez though you're not you're not picking Ramirez for a beer to hang out for a beer no fuck that no, I'm not getting him drunk. If, you, if we don't have to sleep over and hang out right no, no I, I don't want to get him uh Oh, I don't want to say Kemper. It's fucking boring. I say Kemper for. I know you're a fanboy. It's okay. Dude, imagine the size of his fucking dick. <laughs> he's like six foot nine. He wants that. No, dude, I'm telling you, it's. You think he's got a little mi micro? Yeah, the the it, there's a point on the the tall scale yeah. where it where it goes reverse. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, this is that <laughs> you listen. Don't quote me. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> six three, six four. That's the prime picket. So you're telling me that Shaq has a micro? No, I wouldn't say micro. I wouldn't say micro. Not but proportionate. It's, but I I've heard from Instagram thoughts. I've seen the interviews. It's not as big as you would think. Really? Yes. Huh. That's interesting. So there's like a certain there's like a certain height. There's, there's a yeah. There's a cutoff. Uh, you know the what? The freakishly tall people do not. It doesn't just keep going. It stops. And I'll argue when you're six nine, two hundred and eighty pounds. Yeah. Proportionately, your body's too big. It makes it look even smaller. Think about it. I need confirmation. All right, ladies. Ladies, if you've been with anybody over, over six, 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 six or taller. Yes. Uh, does it go? Is it proportionate or not? That's what I want to know. Yeah. So even though uh, even though Pickle Jenny's uh, question was was kind of similar to the last one, we did branch off to another question: Does your penis get smaller the taller you get? I mean, no, I mean it's not criminal related, it's, but it is just as we, intriguing. Listen, ladies, I know you guys are out there. Let's we need some scientific proof here. So can we please <laughs> call it? Now, granted, six five and up, six six men. That's kind of a rare. Yeah. So there's only going to be a handful. Well, I mean, we know we know a couple of. Six, I'm five, not six, saying six that people. they're not. We, we, you know, we should just ask. Aver them. Like I'm just saying, average. Yeah. yeah, we should just be like, hey, what, let me see that dick, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me see what you got going on. I'm just curious for science. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just shut up, show it out. Yeah. Yeah. Although there are some like really skinny dudes, like oh yeah, that's like the common five foot eight skinny, skinny dudes. Yeah, skinny and dudes. They're just like skinny dudes just with uh, flopping out that look like they eat cigarettes. Yeah, <laughs> usually yeah. got the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Ugly tattoos that don't make sense. You know what I mean? The, whole, like, the Pete Davidsons of the world. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, uh, that's the common myth right now, right? Yeah. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah skinny, he's... skinny white guys with horse sticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right, where the fuck are we yeah. going with this? <laughs> that, went little, that went a little uh, off. But, but thank you very much, Pickle Jenny. Uh, we're gonna do uh, one more, then we gotta get this show going. We're gonna do uh, Lucy Vicky 13. You have to eat a body part of your deceased best friend to survive. Oh. What are you going to eat? Okay, so let me put this in perspective. Me yeah. and you. Yeah. We're in the podcast studio, all right? Yeah. The door locks. Oh, we're stuck. We're stuck. Yeah. Fuck. Weeks. Weeks on end. We're stuck in here. At what point does one of us snap and kill each other <laughs> just to get it over with? Because we know we're going to have to eat. And who's killing who? I don't know. I probably have to do it my, in your sleep. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna just wait around for you to just overpower me. I'm just gonna. One day, and we're gonna be. As soon as I start to get a gurgle in my stomach, yeah. you'll be passed out. And I'm just. Wah! You're not even gonna. I'm hit. taking a light stand right to the eye. Wah! And then. And then what? What party party are you eating? A calf, probably. You need a calf. Yeah, a calf looks like it's appetizing. Well, you... it looks too much like a like a like a, a wing to me. Hmm. Calf thigh. No, thigh, thigh, I feel like would be that's like a brisket. No. Raw brisket would be horrible to eat. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I heard the ass ass meat. I feel like that's all just fat though. A ass meat? Yeah. 
That's like the largest, one of the largest muscles. Yeah, but there are, yeah, I guess there is some muscle there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know, that's too close to the booty. But hole. you know how when you eat a flat? Yeah. And you like stick your tongue through the, the <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? to push yeah, the meat out? Yeah, that's what I would just do. Like, I'm just picturing that there'd be like that little meat in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be that your, good, like your forearm. Yeah. Because it's too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like right, right through the tibia and fibula. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd probably go with a calf forearm, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Something easy. I'm going, yeah, I'm going with one of the limbs. I don't want to butcher, I don't want to mess with, like, your internal organs yeah, and shit like that. That's yeah. just too much. Well, yeah. All of a sudden, I see you start, that shiny, the glisten of your organs starts yeah. turning me on. I'm like, fuck, Dave, now I'm a... Fuck, you know, you're Dahmer. Yeah, now I'm Dahmer. It's real shiny in there. <laughs> they, they find you, you, got, you have my intestines, <laughs> you're all wrapped up in my intestines. Doing the, the Buffalo Bill dance. Yeah. <laughs> Like what happened? Where How I, long were you in here for? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know, two months. <laughs> Wearing it like a scarf. No, no, I was only in here for like three, four days. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I was in here for the weekend. There's a fridge full of beer in here too, so I didn't, I didn't have to worry about water. Yeah. I could have lasted. It's all Corona. It's okay. It could last for a while. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going with like a leg or arm. I'm gonna try to stay away from the booty hole. I don't want to, you know, because if we're in here for weeks, yeah, that's why I said no internal organs. Yeah, then they really start to rants. Yeah, rants, like if we're in here for weeks, that means like you probably defecated like all over yourself. You know, oh, I don't want to go anywhere near the that. Gases start coming yeah, bubbling up. My right. belly, my belly gets all big. I get a Santa belly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely going with a limb. All right, so... Uh, just, just rescue me before you pop, Dave, please. <laughs> Once you pop, it's over. I'll just kill myself. <laughs> All right, so if I told you that I was going to read your question on this show, I am going to hold it for the next one. I apologize, but we got to keep moving on. Uh, thank you, everybody. And once again, before each episode, we'll send out an AMA on the Instagram for a chance for your question to be read by us. Be sure to follow us at Colonel AF Pod on Instagram to be sure to get your questions in. Let's go to Florida, Dave. Yeah. All right, so I mean, there's a lot of beautiful places in yes. Florida. There really is. St. Petersburg. Florida is West a very Palm beautiful, Beach. yeah, beautiful gorgeous. Spots. Yeah. But the hatred that I have mm. for Ocala, Florida. Ocala, okay. okay. It, no offense. It, no it, it, offense. <laughs> that's where that's where dreams go to die. Ocala, Florida. It's fucking. It's just a giant trailer park. I don't care what anyone says. Ocala is fucking disgusting, and the people from it suck too. No offense. There's a reason. There's a reason. I'll talk to. I'll talk to you after. I've been there. Yeah, pr- is this I've like a there. deep personal yeah, fucking yeah. issue? No, okay. Ocala, Ocala. I've said it. I made fun of Ocala on this mm. this this podcast before too. But it's very white trashy. It's in the yeah. middle. Middle, yeah. The middle. Nothing really nothing. going. Yeah. Just trailer parks and Florida people. <laughs> so, so whenever I get an Ocala story, I have to say it. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just uh, that's what it is. All right, Ocala, Florida. Mm. Marion County deputies arrested a man for barging into a home and punching the homeowner in the face Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> deputies say Keith Sherman Jr., 39, forced his way into Ocala home into a, an Ocala home and attacked the homeowner because he believed the man's daughter owed him money. Sherman told deputies that he came to the house to buy crack cocaine, but wasn't satisfied with the product and wanted his money back. <laughs> Sherman is booked in Marion County Jail on charges of burglary, battery, and property damage. Oh my God. <laughs> but the the balls to be like, yeah. when the cops come there, bitch, sold me some bum-ass crack. Yeah. <laughs> that is like, the, it's the most Ocala thing ever, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you break in. To, and it's not even her home. Right. It's her, yeah. it's her family's home. Yeah. Punch the dad in the face because your daughter sold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, crackheads are the, it's like a special type. Yeah. It's 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 it, another like I love them like the memes when it's like the crackhead running the tour like biking the tour de France on a Barbie bike on a fucking like, four year old's Barbie bike and he's just passing like all the because <laughs> it's true you don't hear like you hear like heroin addicts they're dope they're dope sick they're falling over they're, yeah, like, yeah, yeah you know what I mean meth heads are completely whacked crackheads are fairly sane. Right. and But they're just, they're doing backflips and shit like that. Shit. New York's in the middle of uh, Times Square just doing yeah. backflips for money and shit. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> they're in shape. They're not like, they're, they're, they're fiends, but it's not like a meth head. It's Look not, what I can do for a dollar. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it's very, it's very strange. It's yeah. a strange drug. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, uh, does the, does the level, does the willingness of uh, sucking dick for drugs like increase with crack? Like, is there like a, a, a hierarchy of drugs where you you'd be more willing to suck a dick for? I think dope would be the worst. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Dope because dope sick and like 
you will become physically sick yeah, and physically feel like sick. shit if you don't get your fucking fix. Yeah. Where that's why I think do- heroin is the worst drug in the fucking world. Yeah. And you're probably more likely to do outrageous things for it, so you don't right. feel that pain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, meth, you'd probably suck a dick because you're just meth heads are horny too. I've, yeah. I've, I've heard. I you heard the meth. Yeah, I heard meth like. <laughs> Meth, like whenever you see some wild video on online, that's yeah. usually meth is involved. Yeah. They're cr- that's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Crack, I don't know, because yeah. you're not, you're you're still gonna get kind of sick from not yeah. like relapsing and stuff like that, or uh, not relapsing, but but getting sin on crack. But like you're not, you're not getting dope sick like the way. Right. All right. So the reason why we're all gathered here today is to discuss Gary Whit- Ridgeway, and as we talked about, he is the second most prolific serial killer in the United States, convicted of forty nine, admitting killing 71 but believed to have killed over 100 it's a very very sad story uh because there were a few chances where he could have been caught and he wasn't one where they were actually at his house uh with witnesses and the investigating officer basically took him at his word and forgot all about it so we'll talk about who he was and how he got to go on his murderous ways here in chapter one To catch a serial killer, you must learn about the serial killer, how they operate, what drives them, why do they do what they do. And the best person to catch a serial killer is another serial killer. This is what happened when a series of women disappeared and their lifeless, decomposing bodies began showing up along the Green River and the surrounding area in Washington State. When the Green River Task Force was created, Two members of the task force, Robert Keppel and Dave Reichert, began interviewing psychologists to try and get an understanding of the motivation this killer had and in turn, lead them directly to him. This would take some time and numerous interviews with several people. Their path would bring them all the way to Florida to speak to another Washington serial killer, Ted Bundy. In 1984, Bundy had already been in prison for six years on death row for the Chai Omega murders and the murder of 12-year-old Kimberly Leach. Keppel and Riker interviewed Bundy because of the similarity between the Green River murders and his own and felt he could provide them with some insight. During one interview, Bundy said that the killer was most likely revisiting the dump sites to have sex with the corpse. With this information, police were able to collect valuable evidence and while Bundy's assistance didn't lead to an immediate capture of the killer, The meetings proved to be valuable in understanding the mind of the killer. It took 17 more years before they could apprehend a man who lived in everyone's nightmare as the Green River Killer, but in reality, he'd go by the name of Gary Ridgway. Gary Ridgway's 19-year reign of carnage labeled him as the most prolific serial killer America has ever seen in which he left the state of Washington and parts of Oregon littered with death. In an attempt to make sense of his murderous ways, we must first learn about his childhood. He was born February 8, 1949 in Salt Lake City, Utah, the second son to domineering Mary and overzealous Thomas Ridgway. His mother would constantly berate her husband and children and Ridgway would bear witness to these incessant tirades. His father was highly critical of prostitution in the area, and at a very young age, Ridgway would listen to his father's rants of the disgust he felt towards these women. Ridgway had a bedwetting problem into his early teens, and his mother would insist on washing his genitals each time he did. He would later say that he had a conflicting relationship with his mother. On one hand, he would fantasize about killing her. On the other, he was sexually attracted to her. Ridgway's teen years weren't much better. Classmates in high school would label him as cordial, but forgettable. He struggled in school and had a low IQ of 82 and was diagnosed with dyslexia. Ridgway would have to repeat the same grade twice in order to graduate. At the age of 16, he lured a six-year-old boy into the woods near his home and repeatedly stabbed him, puncturing his liver. The boy survived and heard Ridgway laugh as he was leaving. He also heard him say, I always wondered what it would be like to kill someone. After high school, Ridgway married his 19-year-old girlfriend, Claudia Craig, and was sent off to Vietnam as a member of the U.S. Navy. While there, 
Ridgeway would turn to the abundance of prostitutes that work in the area where he was stationed. His promiscuous appetite would find him with the sexually transmitted disease, gonorrhea. Regardless of this, Ridgeway would continue to have unprotected sex with these women. Craig also had an extramarital affair, and the marriage was over before they reached their first anniversary. When Ridgeway returned from Vietnam, he got a job working at Kentworth Truck Factory as a painter, a job he would hold for 30 years. In 1973, he married his second wife, Marsha Brown. During this marriage, Ridgeway became a religious fanatic, often going door to door, unsolicited, preaching about the Bible, and would often read scripture aloud in public and at work. His disdain for prostitutes grew as well, as he would aggressively condemn each one, but this was all hypocritical. Ridgeway would solicit their services, even though he was publicly criticizing them. Marsha would later say that Ridgeway would demand sex from her several times a day and would often want to do it in public places. She also claimed that he choked her after a heated argument. After both Ridgeway and Brown had extramarital affairs, they divorced in 1981. Now with the freedom to do as he pleased, Ridgeway would turn to the same sex workers he despised, but this time around, things would escalate to horrific extremes. Criminal AF would be back after this quick break. Now back to Criminal AF. So we discussed in the beginning of the chapter how Ted Bundy provided some information on how they would be able to catch the Green River Killer. Uh, He suggested that the killer knew his victims and tried to befriend them before he murdered them. It really sounds like a plot of a movie, by the way. Yeah. Like, let's get the fucking, let's get the serial killers together and, yeah. and take them down. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, re- it's actually a very cool story. It I is, think. it is. Uh, he also su- suggested that the killer likely disposed of even more bodies where they had found the more recent Oh, ones. wait, I literally just said the plot of Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> You did. <laughs> so, there you we go. Did. I just said yeah. a lot of a movie. <laughs> That's where they probably got inspiration from, I'm telling yeah. you. That's actually, yeah, that actually makes sense. Now, moreover, he believed the disposal pattern of the bodies led closer to the killer's home. And Bundy was able to provide insight from like a, like a killer's mind, uh, much of which was helpful to the detectives in their understanding of serial killer behavior. Now, while none of Bundy's information led to the arrest of, of the Green River Killer, uh, in hindsight, Bundy wasn't very far far off from describing Ridgeway's behavior. Uh, even Rid- Ridgeway himself would admit that he would put the women at ease to, by showing him chill, uh, pictures of his of his kid and you know talking to him about his family and you know basically like Bundy said he would befriend them mm-hmm. prior to snapping and fucking killing them. Yeah. You know what I mean. Uh, there was another reason why Bundy was so eager to help in the investigation. Now, it stated that the detectives, they shared some vital information with him, uh, including crime scene photos. Oh, fucking sick. Yeah. Oh, here I am just hoping, you know, Bundy, maybe you like, it's like uh, catch me if you can. Right. You know what I mean? When Leo gets the the, the guy who was forging checks ends up working for the FBI. Yeah, no, yeah, he yeah. just wanted to see the creepy photos. Right. Fucking and, weird, uh, sick fuck. Yeah, so he would he would share some of the crime scene photos and other information to uh, which Bundy responded by jerking off in front of the detectives. Jesus Christ! Uh, yeah, so that's wild. Needs to say they stopped sharing information after that. Uh, we also talk about Ridgeway's mother being obsessed with his bedwetting, uh, similar to Michael Ross's mother. With the exception that Ross's mother didn't uh, get off by washing his fucking penis after he pissed himself. Yeah, you want to look at like a, a a wires crossing moment right there. Yeah, I mean. I, Ridgeway had every sign of a serial killer by far. Oh, yeah, Bed yeah. wedding. You can go down the list. Yeah. Uh, mother sexually abusing him, because I don't care what you said. That's, that's, that's a teenager. That's sexually that's sexual abuse. If your mother is watching your dick when you're a teenager, that's the yeah. the physical hatred and anger for its prostitution, but it really it's curiosity. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like every there's there's the sex interest, bedwetting. Luring sexual a little boy a into the woods. Yeah. Sexual, was, like, yeah. I mean, everything. Yeah. Walking red flag. Yep. Now, while in Vietnam, Ridgeway would catch gonorrhea uh, numerous times from local prostitutes. That he hated. Yes. And he would blame it on them. You know, like these disgusting women. But I can't prostitutes. stop going back. Yes. And while at the same time, he was never, he refused to wear condoms. 
uh, because of his religious upbringing. We just don't oh, believe in condoms. Added yeah. another one too. To yep. Uh, and we also discussed how he had an 82 IQ. I mean, hey, say what you want. 82 IQ. He's basically Forrest Gump, but Forrest did a lot of things. So did Gary Richway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he it's made different, it, different sides he of the made, pendulum. Yeah. He, yeah. He might not be book smart, but that guy definitely got away. I mean, right. It still takes a. I mean, if you, if you put two and two together. You, do you, do you think Forrest would have would have come to the conclusion like, hey, if I wear a condom while I'm having sex <laughs> with these prostitutes, maybe my dick won't drip anymore? Oh. You, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> this charge isn't funny. No. <laughs> <laughs> so Ridgeway would go on to eventually marry three three times, and each of his wives would say that Ridgeway's sexual appetite was insatiable. Mm. He demanded sex numerous times a day. Gee, that seems like a lot of work. Yeah, oftentimes in public. A little voyeurism in there? I guess so. And in his marriage to Judith Mawson, because, you know, as we learned, between his marriages, his second marriage and Judith, that's where the, the magnitude of his of his killings happened. Uh, their public acts of sex would include having sex where his uh, victims were either found, previously found, or were still present in close proximity. Bundy was right. So he knew... He's going back. Yeah, he's going back. Not only to have probably have sex with the dead bodies again, but also to bring his 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 now wife to have sex. It's like a cat. Yeah. Bring you a dead mouse. Like, right. look, look what I got for you. <laughs> yeah. Look what I did for you. <laughs> this is what I did for you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Fucking imagine, sick fuck, dude. Dude. Yeah. Uh, Bringing your wife or girlfriend next to your, your cluster of, of bodies, you know, to have sex. You, you yell at me again. This is where you're going to yeah, end up. Yeah. That's, that's terrifying. I have a spot saved yeah. just for you. She's like, look at the sunset. And he's just like, just getting rock hard. Yeah. Like five feet away. Yeah. There's a fucking hand oh hanging out of the dirt. Oh my God. That's, yeah. that's creepy. All right. So we'll go into more of the, of the investigative side of, of the Green River Killer and how they failed over and over and over again, uh, repeatedly here in chapter two. Old Highway 99 weaves its way through SeaTac, Washington, adjacent to its airport, and in 1982 was sprawling with topless bars, one hour room rentals, and prostitution. Not far from the strip, as the locals would call it, lies the Green River. On August 15th of that year, Robert Ainsworth began his day of fishing like any other. He would climb into his rubber raft and drift down the Green River. This day, however, would be a bit different. He encountered a middle-aged man standing on the banks of the river. In typical fisherman banter, Ainsworth called out to the man and asked if he had caught anything. The man stated he did not. As the man turned to walk back to his truck, he asked if Ainsworth found anything. Ainsworth thought that the question was a bit odd, until a short moment later, his life would change forever. What he thought was a mannequin stuck in a fallen underwater tree Ainsworth went to retrieve it out of the water. Doing so, he tipped his raft, fell in, and found himself staring into the lifeless eyes of a woman, with her arm waving with the current as if to be begging for help. Within seconds, a second dead woman appeared. Panicked, Ainsworth swam to shore and summoned a passing bicyclist and asked him to call police and explain his gruesome story. Police arrived and after a search of the area, discovered a third body. This one on the shore about 30 feet from the other two. This victim was later identified as 16-year-old Opal Mills, who was killed less than 24 hours earlier. The other two victims, Marsha Chapman, 31, who was reported missing two weeks prior, and Cynthia Hines, 17, was in the water for only a few days. These would not be the first discoveries in and along the Green River. About a week earlier, the body of 23-year-old Deborah Bonner was discovered slumped over a log, and a month prior, the remains of 16-year-old Wendy Lee Caulfield were found floating in the river. The women were all killed by strangulation and had pyramid-shaped rocks inserted into their vaginas. The state of Washington had another serial killer on the loose and it would take several years and several more bodies before police would be able to put an end to it. On the 15th of September 1982, another young girl would be reported missing. Mary Meehan, 
just 18 years old and a daughter of strict Catholic parents from the prominent Seattle neighborhood of Bellevue, vanished. She had been living in a motel with her boyfriend along the strip, and what makes her story that more heart-wrenching is that she was eight and a half months pregnant. Five days later, 15-year-old Deborah Estes was seen for the last time alive, and the police were nowhere closer to discovering who their killer was. They did collect evidence from the scenes, including semen samples, but a lot of the crime scenes were difficult to navigate. Ridgway would deliberately litter the area with used gum and cigarette butts that he collected from other people to throw off the police. The FBI would label him as an organized killer, whose acts are deliberate, planned, and absent of all feelings other than the excitement they feel when they revisit their dumping grounds. Ridgway would place his victims in clusters and would prioritize them. If they put up a fight, they were special, and Ridgway would place them in areas of prominence. Only the special ones were put in clusters. If they didn't fight back, he would dispose of them like trash. Getting bolder, Ridgway was nearly caught on April 30th, 1983, when he kidnapped 18-year-old Maria Malvar. Maria and her boyfriend were eating at a diner when he stepped out to use the payphone. When he returned, Maria was missing. Her boyfriend went back outside to see if he could spot Maria and noticed she was in the passenger seat of a pickup truck that was driving away. Maria's boyfriend followed them until they reached an intersection and he lost them. He returned to Maria's family's house and they all went out looking for her. Early the next morning, they located the truck in a small residential neighborhood just a few blocks from the strip. They contacted the police and a sergeant arrived to knock on the front door of Gary Ridgway's house. In typical sociopathic fashion, Ridgway came off as confused and naive as he told the sergeant he was home all night and had no idea what he was talking about. The sergeant took him at his word and never followed up. Ridgway would lead police to her remains in 2003. He had committed 46 confirmed murders from 1982 to 1985 when he met Judith Mawson in a bar. She described her first impression of Ridgway as handsome, polite, and he treated her like a lady. She would become his third wife in 1988. Although she claims that Ridgway made her smile every day, Judith did admit it was odd when she first went to his house and there was carpet and furniture missing, including his bed. He would explain it off as the kids ruining the carpet and an ex-girlfriend had taken the furniture and she had believed them. Ridgway never let off any suspicions that he was a serial killer. He was always loving, always attentive, and always home when he was supposed to be, except for a few occasions. Judith recalls only a handful of times during their 13-year marriage that Ridgway left early for work or came home late, but he would say it was either for overtime or a union meeting. Ridgway never put off any red flags, even though he killed three women while he was with Judith. Their life would come to a crashing halt on November 30th, 2001. Literally. Police crashed through her front door as she waited for Ridgway to come home for lunch. She was placed face down on the floor while police searched the house. Ridgway was already in custody, having been arrested on his way home. For two more years, Ridgway would manipulate his wife into believing he was innocent. That is, until Ridgway's full confession in 2003 to avoid the death penalty in exchange for life in prison. Although Ridgway has been convicted of 49 murders, he has confessed to 71, and there are possibly more. As in his words, there are so many, I can't remember. So there are numerous times over the years where police could have found out who the Green River Killer was, but they failed, like I said, over and over and over again. In the early 1980s, there were tiny drops of a unique industrial spray paint that was detected on the very first victim okay, by the Washington State Patrol Crime Laboratory. These droplets of paint were also discovered on the following seven victims. So the first eight victims all right, had this these droplets of, of paint it's only used in one area it was in the it was paint for uh, uh for, for, for vehicles bike. yeah 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 
that nice flake, that nice speckle. Right. Yeah. Uh, and they did not provide this information to the detectives. Really? Yes, assigned to the case. And it wasn't revealed until 2003 after DNA evidence uh, linked Ridgeway to the murders. Now, the paint was not made public for use, and it was predominantly used solely at the Seattle factory of the Kenworth Truck Company, which Ridgeway worked for for 30 years. Okay. Now, at the time of these paint specs being found, uh, Ridgeway was already a sus- uh, suspect. Wow. Wow. They already had him in his, as a suspect. The bare minimum. The very bare minimum. Link the paint chips to the fucking... Dude, and you think you're getting away with go yeah. back go back to the episode. You think you're getting away with a fucking murder spree. Yeah. These guys are this guy found a, a specific paint spec that only is relative to one yeah. no, come on. To only the Kenworth truck factory. It's impressive. In Seattle. And they didn't even use it. Yeah. Crazy. Yep. And he worked yeah, like I said, he worked as a truck painter for thirty years at the Kenworth factory. So from that point on, thirty or possibly more women would have been saved. If they just went with that fucking oh, information, that's, that's sad. there was a direct so link to the victims, to the paint, to Ridgeway. Game over. Checkmate. When that information came became public knowledge, too, I would be livid, livid. if my daughter was one of those. Livid. Yeah. After that, exactly. after that evidence, like, are you yep. guys kidding me? Mm-hmm. So, you know, like I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't accept that. Yeah. I wouldn't accept it. I don't even know. I don't know what I would do. Oh, I absolutely. wouldn't accept it. I. I'd be looking for an f- enormous payday. Yes. Huge. Yes. You know, instead of like, you know, connecting Ridgeway to the to these women, uh, he kept slipping through the cracks because um, Ridgeway had first become connected to the investigation in 1982 when he was arrested for prostitution or, or soliciting Soul prostitution. City. Yep. Uh, he was questioned again in 1983 when his truck was recognized as the one used in the kidna- kidnapping of Maria Malvar. Okay. Who went? Who disappeared? Yep. Ended up being found murdered uh, a while a while later. In 1984, he was given a polygraph, and he passed it. Well, like a true in true sociopath uh, right. fashion. I wonder if they asked him about uh, you know if he had <laughs> 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 fantasies about his sister. No, no, they were probably just asking him regular questions. This guy was stone cold. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. No, not a pulse, not a heartbeat in sight. Yeah. Uh, uh, in 1987, he was asked to provide hair and fluid samples, like over and over and over and over. This man was on the authorities' radar. He was brought in for questioning. He was this, 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 that, that, that. But they could never he prove. He kept killing too. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Yep. And they could never prove or connect him to the murders. A normal person goes, "Oh, I got some heat on me. I uh, better, I better slow, slow down." down. No. You know what I mean? He's like, "Fuck you! I'm gonna go murder." So yeah, they they couldn't could never prove or connect them to the murders uh, due to either their own incompetence or I mean let's face it the victims they weren't that high on their priority list you know they're prostitutes drug users blah 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 I mean there were a couple that that didn't fall into that category but for the majority but that was you know that went on until two thousand one so what when did we say nineteen eighty two he was first brought in for questioning yep yeah two thousand one. So we're looking at almost, what, 20 years? Mm-hmm. Now, DNA, DNA evidence became prevalent in the in investigation, and Ridgeway's DNA was matched as that being found on Maria Chapman, Opal Mills, Cynthia Hines, and Carrie Ann Christensen. Uh, three more were later added to the list as, as victims Wendy Caulfield, Deborah Bonner, and Deborah Estes after the paint drop analysis matched the DNA evidence yes so now 20 years fucking later they're like oh hey look there's paint chips that fucking match everybody look at that amazing like that's not a known fucking come on there's no connection there right jesus yeah so in november of 2003 uh two years after his arrest ridgeway pleaded guilty to 48 counts of aggravated first degree murder as part of a plea bargain, 48. yeah, as part of a plea bargain oh, to shit. to save his own skin, so he didn't get the death penalty. So he admitted to forty eight. Yeah, yeah, he let him rot. Let yeah. him rot, Joe. Uh, as part of this agreement, uh, Ridgeway gave his full confession, provided the locations of where he disposed of his victims, including two of which he transported across state lines to Oregon. Um, now, if it wasn't for his plea agreement. The state of Washington only had enough evidence to charge and convict Ridgeway with seven of the murders, leaving the other 42 confirmed victims nameless. Oh, that's... And being able to put... That's in, crappy. Yeah. That's very crappy. Because so, even if you know that he did it, you still don't have, like, that that 
Yeah. Nail in the coffin. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know what's crazy? What I was just thinking about when you were saying that 48 victims plus. Mm-hmm. Do you think, like, you know how usually when you, you, you hear these stories about serial killers, they have like a connection with their victims. They remember everyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Do you, I mean, at that many, there's no way he has, you know what I mean? Like, Knowledge at, at what point? Yeah. Like, at what? He knows exactly where they are. Yeah, I mean, he probably has dumping grounds. Right. But he, he would, I'm talking about very, like a actual like connection, connection with each and every victim. 40 fucking 40 plus 49 plus. Yeah. He uh, I don't remember. At it, some it, point, it, he's just killing to kill. Like, right. I, I I don't remember. I remember reading it somewhere. I'm not 100 percent sure. But he a large a, a good portion of, of his victims. He did remember their names. I'm sure. You know, from like newspaper clippings. I'm sure he didn't know their name when he killed them. But, yeah. uh, you know, after the fact. I remember their names, remember what they look like, remember what they're wearing. He remembered where they, he buried them. He remembered like all these like minute fucking details about them. Jesus. You know? um, there were a few where he's like, ah, oh, I can't remember her name or, or he confused where uh, this, like this woman was buried compared to, compared that to this yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. He, he switched up a couple of them. But for the most part, the mass, the vast majority of them, he knew it, every little specific Holy fucking detail, shit. how he killed them. What they were wearing when he killed them, but you know what I mean. Wow. Yeah. So, he, in, so going back to before, in a sense, he kind of was like Forrest Gump. You know, <laughs> he, he remembered. I love how shit. we're comparing Gary Ridgway <laughs> to Forrest fucking Gump. Forrest Gump, dude. <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say about, about that. that. <laughs> he was just an idiot savant at killing. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was. They always say, you know, they shoot for the stars, buddy. You, you'll find your thing. <laughs> That's it. Fucking Christ. Uh, uh, to go to go along with you know with his guilty plea, uh, they uh, like I said, they had they had him confess to these murders. And I'm going to read a portion of his uh, his confession. And it says, "I killed the 48 women listed in the state's uh, second amended information. In most cases, when I killed these women, I did not know their names. Most of the time, I killed them the first time I met them." And I do not have a good memory of their faces, which is bullshit. Uh, I killed so many women, I have a hard time keeping them straight. Which is bullshit. I have reviewed information and discovery about each of the murders with my attorneys, and I am positive that I killed each one of the women charged in the second information. I killed them all in King County. I killed most of them in my house near Military Road, and I killed a lot of them in my truck not far from where I picked them up. I killed some of them outside. I remember leaving each woman's body in the place where she was found. Holy shit. I have discussed with my attorneys the common scheme or plan, aggravating circumstance charged in all these murders. I agree that each of the murders I committed was part of a common scheme or plan. The plan was that I wanted to kill as many women I thought were prostitutes as I possibly could. I picked prostitutes as my victims because I hate prostitutes and I did not want to pay them for sex. I also picked prostitutes as victims because they were easy to pick up without being noticed. I knew they would not be reported missing right away and might never be reported missing. I picked prostitutes because I thought I could kill as many of them as I could without getting caught. Another part of my plan was where I put the bodies of these women. Most of the time I took the women's jewelry and their clothes to get rid of any evidence and make it harder to identify. I placed most of the bodies in groups which I call clusters. I did this because I wanted to keep track of all the women I killed. I like to drive by the clusters around the county. Clusters? Ooh. Yeah. Fucking makes my skin crawl. I know. I like to drive by the clusters around the county and think about the women I placed there. I usually use the landmark to remember a cluster and the women I placed there. Sometimes I killed and dumped the woman intending to start a new cluster and never returned because I thought I might get caught putting more women there. So Ridgeway was initially sentenced to 48 life terms for each of the confirmed victims. In 2021, after a skull belonging to Rebecca Marrero was found, uh, Ridgeway was sentenced to his 49th life term. Now, there are uh, 12 more women the Green River Task Force believes Ridgeway murdered, and those are Amina Agashev, uh, Casey Ann Lee, Tammy Lyles, Kelly K. McGinnis, Angela Gardner, Patricia Osborne, Christy Valrak, Patricia LeBlanc, Darcy Ward, Cora McGurk, and a Jane Doe, possibly named Michelle. That's the only name Ridgeway could remember was her name was Michelle. Mm. Uh, most of these women were found near locations of Ridgeway's clusters, while the others were never found. Uh, Ridgeway himself confessed to 65 murders and then upped it to 71. Oof. 
while the task force believes the true number to be over 100. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So this. I think I, my closing argument, <laughs> my, my closing uh, statement is yeah. going to just be simple mm -hmm. on this story. And federal government needs to wake the fuck up and get over this moral high, high horse and just legalize prostitution. These women are going to do it anyway. Right. Put them in a fucking safe area. Mm. Like, it, he says it right there. It's easy to kill these people. You're breeding the the, the shit that these girl women have to go through yeah. because they have nothing else in life. And, mm. and it's 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 crazy. Just right. legalize prostitution. Yeah. I mean, it, what, what, is, what is the difference? I mean, I'm, I'm going to put this out there. Argue it. Agree with it. Whatever you got to do. But it's, it's worth something to discuss. What is the difference between prostitution and like OnlyFans. It's the same thing except the, the girls who are doing OnlyFans have the means to profit off of it in the right way. Right. Where they have homes, they have webcams, they right. have this and that. The girls, the, the ladies who are doing are, prostitu are prostituting on the side of the road are not. They're usually drug addicts. They're, they have nothing. But they're both profiting by a means of sex. Correct. You know what I mean? Yes. Or, or doing certain Correct. things for money which in a sexual manner. You know what I mean? Yeah why this this has been such a a stigma or or something for for so long. I mean, we're talking centuries. Dude, go, we're talking it, back to freaking... Uh, it, go, it goes to... I mean, it goes all the way back to the Vatican taking over all of Europe and, and running, you know what I mean, from yeah. that little... Like, it, it goes back into just moral, outstanding, uh, proper morals for a human being. Back yeah. then. Like, it was... Right. It's all... But, but pre, pre before that, it was completely fine. Right. You know, it's just, it's, we've had this, we yeah. have these weird archaic beliefs that I hate. I don't know. I, I just don't see, like you said, just fucking. What are we, they're going to do legal, it anyway. Legalized. It's going to be done anyway. Right. Yeah. Legalize prostitution on the federal level. Legalize, I mean. If Stop clogging up, you know, the, the female incarcerate, incarceration record. Because it's, it's actually most women are arrested for prostitution for drugs or prostitution or soliciting yeah drugs yeah. and prostitution right. get these women in like homes where it yeah. can be regulated, regulated yep. and they can be safe mm -hmm. and do it that look way. at the bunny ranch yeah thriving yeah but you got it's it's a thriving establishment the only difference is like i said the way like that goes back to your only fans thing yeah. where these women are more well off yeah. they're the cream of the crop but yeah, but wouldn't wouldn't that be similar? Well, no, a lot of these women who are getting picked up off the side of the street by Gary Ridgeway are usually drug addicts, homeless. Okay. They're not. But if they had a safe avenue to do it. Yeah, you never know. You know what I mean? They might proffer. You can also get them help. Yeah. State. Mm -hmm. Uh, like therapist, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Just there's there's ways around it. We just have to get over this archaic belief that yes, it might be wrong. You don't want to promote it, but it's gonna be done anyway. Exactly. So why not regulate it and help it out? Yeah, I All agree. Right. That's my closing statement on this. I agree. Thing. I agree. Okay. All right. Try to shoot, try to, I'm trying to feel, you know, go back to the victims and say, yeah. listen, those all, everybody could have been helped. So yeah, I'm gonna put that out in the Spotify. Uh, I'll throw the question out there. Do you think that, you know, it, something like this should be legalized or, or continue to be stigmatized? Yeah, you know? for sure. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right, so that'll do it for this episode of Criminal AF, Gary Ridgeway, the Green River Killer. Before we go, if you liked what you heard, go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a review or comment on the episode. And don't forget, you can become a, one of the debauched by joining our Patreon for as little as $2 a month for general support. Everyone gets ad-free episodes and access to our Discord channel. Those who join the $5 tier or above get all of our Audible video and downloadable content, including narrated scripts, 5-Minute Murder, our Patreon-only Random AF. For the higher tiers, you get all of this, plus producer credits on every episode, some goodies thrown in, t-shirts, posters, coffee mugs, etc. Just go to criminalafpodcast.com backslash support to choose your tier. Links to our socials, support, merchandise, reviews, and more are in the episode description. Signing off from Studio Chloroform. Keep your head on a swivel and stay safe till next time. Now, now give me our theme music. See ya. Yeah.